Welcome back troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. Classic unboxing style day. We've got four guitars, a little surprise, and a sponsored segment in today's episode. And that sponsor is MutualNoise.com. We'll hear from them in a little bit, but first, let's open up this strange red taped package. Now, if you ever get something from UPS that has red tape on it, you ask the seller, why did you put red tape on it? And they reply, I didn't put red tape on it. That means it's a high value package. Use that information for good, not evil. But this is a guitar that somebody was selling on Reverb and they just happened to like my show. So they messaged me and said, hey, I will sell this to you for $500 less than I'm asking. Are you interested? And it was a model that, I mean, I wouldn't say I was 100% necessarily seeking it out, but it is actually a guitar body shape that I have not documented in a long time. And in a long time, I'm talking back in the carpet era, and it was only one of them, and people have been wanting me to do these ever since. So let's go ahead and get this big clunky case out of here. Looks like the handle's down here. Nice packing job. Unfortunately, I think there's a... I'm picking up the whiff of a smoky scent. A two, three... What is the guitar that's in here that I have not reviewed in a long time? A Firebird. The only other Firebird that I have had was... I think it was a 1981? It had two mini humbuckers, kind of like this one, but it had, but somebody had put one of those Maestro Vibrolas on it. It was a really cool guitar, that's for sure. But here we go. Oh man. Nice. This guy must not have owned this one for too long, or maybe that box was just stored in a weird location. Okay, so the guitar is all good. So that's nice that this one doesn't smell like smoke. I was a little bit scared there. But this one actually still smells like brand new. But this is an anniversary Firebird. Like the only bad thing about this, guys, there's a big old chip up there. But because of that, I was able to get a decent price on this one. And, you know, make it worthwhile to review something that, you know, I don't normally touch. This is a complete neck through guitar one of gibson's only neck through variations that they do within their lineup now you can find some limited edition sgs that are like 12 strings that they did like this but hey this thing's looking pretty cool and we will get to experience a firebird it it's been a long time but now we need to move on to our sponsored segment today's sponsor is mutualnoise.com with their new app song if you don't know how to play all the chords in every key, this is the app for you. So essentially what this app is trying to do is organizing it in a way that makes sense for beginners and intermediate players to help them write songs. So it's not just the major or minor chords that you're using or the sevens, they kind of get you into those fancy jazz chords too. When asked what makes their app most valuable, they say their strength is in their organization of everything. It's designed to be an easy to use chord generator, not the next Sun Studios. I have five free codes for this app to give away, so all you have to do is like, comment, and subscribe, visit their website or app description page, and I'll choose a winner very shortly. And hey, if you don't have a phone, they also have digital poster prints available on their website. So definitely check out their website and application if you need to learn some chords. I know I definitely will be. <laughs> you know, if you're ever stuck in a rut, just learn some new chords and then you really do start to learn some more stuff and just guitar becomes fun again. So I definitely need to sit down and do that a little bit because honestly, lately I've been, you know, just so stuck. I'm disgusted with my playing. It hasn't gotten any better. I would like to keep doing that Make Progress Monday series, but I gotta make progress on all these guitars yet too. But what do we have in our second unboxing here? I'm not quite entirely too sure myself. I'm guessing this might be the Custom Shop SG I found. Yep, I would say that is it. So this was a guitar I found on Reverb and it was for sale by a pawn shop. 
Now, a lot of people think, oh, if a pawn shop has it, they got it because they stole it from somebody. Like, they got it really cheap because they needed the money. That's not always the case. Like, there's a local pawn shop that I used to deal with quite a bit. He just buys and sells them, kind of like a guitar business, on top of, you know, taking in on pawn and things like that. But this, this SG, I think you guys are going to like it. Oh. I have to deal with another one of these. <laughs> you know, that's the thing about the Custom Shop SG cases. They don't fit them very well. Almost every single one that I unbox is always like jumping around out here. But what's going on here? What's going on with this Maestro Vibrola? Where's our liar? What's this Tiki guy doing on here? This is an Elliot Easton model. You can see his little signature right there. I'll be honest, I did not even know this guitar existed. I knew he had the Tiki Bird, but as far as the SG Custom, that was a new one on me. And I've got to say, this thing is actually in pretty good shape. We've got a little bit of finish checking kind of by where they installed this new strap button. Not a huge deal, but apparently these are pretty collectible. I don't think they made that many, but I'll do all the research and figure everything out. But this one's Elliot Easton 044. What's kind of strange about this SG Custom is the fact that it's only two pickups. Usually when you think SG Custom White with a Vibrola on it, you think three pickups. So that's something that makes this one a little bit different on top of the Tiki and the double signatures. Looks like some things came loose during shipment. But whenever you buy something from a pawn shop, definitely check them over pretty well because they're not always the most knowledgeable in guitars. Sometimes they'll just buy them and sell them because they're an item of value. So they won't really know to look for twisted necks or non-original parts. So if that's something that's important to you, definitely ask for lots of photos and check your guitars heavily when you get them. But sometimes you can get good deals from pawn shops. Like this one, I was not expecting them to accept my offer, but I made it just in case and yeah, we got it. So yeah, our neck is good on this one. And as long as our truss route is good, we will be okay. Oh. Dang. That's probably why this shop got it. I will have to let them know about that. That's unfortunate. So essentially, somebody's cranked this truss rod so much it maxed out. <sighs> so it looks like this one will... It's either going to get sent back or we'll have to negotiate a better price. Where that is my least favorite part of guitars in general, finding undisclosed issues. And it's not always because they're trying to scam you. Half the time they, they just didn't know. This episode's getting a little bit long, so we'll save these other three unboxings for Monday. Hopefully I can tell you the fate of the SG then as well. Let's go ahead and uh, move on to some boxings. It's, it's time to move on from this chapter in my life. The Project Guitars, I got them back. I can't tell you guys how many emails I had about these guitars. As I had put in my pinned comment, send me an offer if you're interested. Most people were just asking me how much I wanted. <laughs> There was literally over 200 emails on these, about 100 messages on Reverb, and another 100 between Instagram and my Facebook page. That's the reason why I missed an upload one of those days, is I just got so far behind because I didn't have an answer for these people. They're like, how much do you want? So I just ended up putting them on Reverb and then just copy and paste, copy and paste for four hours to all those people to let them know they were available. I list these things at like what I consider top dollar and I received some very strong offers. So this was the Uncle Milty guitar, which is like a 7374 custom. This was originally going to go to somebody locally, but they ended up deciding to pass on it after they talked with their luthier about the cost of restoring it. So this one is actually going off to the UK, which is where most of these project guitars interests were because they have to pay crazy import duty costs and stuff. So if they can buy one that's in, you know, conditions like this, it's a lot cheaper to get it there and then just put the work into it to get a guitar that they want. So this is going to somebody who's going to really appreciate it. He never thought he'd actually be able to buy something from my show because, you know, price, import fees, all that stuff. But he's got some additional goodies in here. 
because I just decided to sell these as the husks and sell all the other parts separate. So he decided to grab those pickups, the original tuners, the truss rod cover, and a few other things to go along with this. So this thing's got quite the trip to go. Hopefully it's not too delayed of a flight because the world is just in turmoil right now. And the next project to say goodbye to is going to a fan of this series of guitars, the RD Artist. So after I actually sat down with this thing for a little bit, in my first impressions on the unboxing episode, I thought the satin finish, it felt like it needed something a little bit more buffing to feel better. So I took some of that Virtuoso polish stuff and that definitely made it feel a little bit better there. And I'm sure I could have took the time to fix the Moog board and, you know, get a lot more money than I did out of this thing. But honestly, Honestly, I'm just ready to move on from these things. <laughs> I'll take my loss because I had uh, one of the top comments in the last video is like, man, how can you just smile through taking all this loss? Well, I never expected to really get these guitars back. So having something to sell and being able to recoup some of this money is just great. But this one is not going internationally. It is actually only having to go to California. So it won't take too long to get there. But pretty much all the project guitars have been spoken for. So the Chopped Fin RD, that's been purchased, but we had to wait a while to ship it. I'm planning to do a full review and demo of it. I'll put some parts on it just for fun. I'll have to rip them off because he bought it as a husk. And uh, people are talking about the Snake Pit. I might have that sold, but I will definitely be doing the full review and demo on that. Tell you guys the full story of that guitar. Pretty much the only thing left over at this point in time is the Les Paul Deluxe. I have a really nice trade offer on that. Somebody wants to trade a uh, studio standard that I'm thinking about. But I also have a couple of people just kind of flirting with it where I think it'll probably just be better for me to sell it as is. So I will buy a different RD artist to do my full <laughs> review and demo on. There's just too many bad memories locked up in this one. <laughs> And our last one to pack up here. My only regret with this guitar is I did not have enough time to do a full review and demo on it. That mini Telecaster. These mini guitars, they always sell within like 24 hours, usually even much before that. There definitely is a market for these travel sized instruments. I mean, this one had been completely decked out. I didn't even fully understand it when I first unboxed it. So not only do you have the upgraded pickup, but the three way toggle switch has been rewired. So you actually get series and parallel as well as just one of the single coils. And the speak up is a complete custom speak up on this one where it's actually louder than the stock one. And we also have this Epiphone Pro Bucker that somebody could put in the front if they really wanted to, if they didn't want the speak up. Cause let's face it, the, the speak up itself, it's kind of a novelty product. But you know, if you're a traveling salesman and stuff and you just need something quiet in your room and you don't want just the pure acoustic tone, I could see how that would be good. Maybe another day we'll find another one of these to do. Thank you, Troglodytes, for tuning into this Boxing Unboxing Day. Don't forget to visit our sponsor's website, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.